empiricism in spiritual path is to evolve in a higher being, to be more mindful, to embrace a deeper awareness that make your spirit free and out of the bounds that society offers, religions offer, any kind of dogma offers. I think the most important is to see the art as a vessel of our own evolution and development. Would you care to introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are? I'm uh, I'm here on the SVP Adept and uh, we are here to discuss uh, further details behind the skin of uh, Aherontas, Sibalba and Sazen Sounds. And um, for me it's an honor to represent uh, our views and our art, especially in South America, that uh, we had a great experience last time with the tour we had, and of course a tour that will happen next year. So um, I think it's a great chance after 10 years to represent in further details what we are studying for and what we represent through our art and our vision. I remember the very first time I actually heard Acherontas. It was on the split with Nightbringer, which was in 2012, the ruins of Edom. About that time, I went back to check your previous work, which was the year before, Vamakara, and ever since then, I've been following Acherontas. Music is a powerful representation of magic, and I know that this is part of the reason or the main reason that Acherontas exists. Would you care to correct me on that statement or something you would like to add? Acherontas is a cavern, not uh, in the simple uh, words, just uh, to create a beautiful uh, energy around us. It's a cavern in a physical version that uh, except to create uh, art, we exist to recode and uh, give a vision to our night side experiences that is connected with our music. And it, its period is uh, different because in its album and uh, in every release, we are trying to represent a deepest approach through the tunnels that we are waiting and we are working to experience uh, deeper aspects of our subconscious and uh, from uh, the night side emanation. Our empiricism uh, has a reflection through our art, not only through music, but uh, through uh, deep aspects and experiences uh, from uh, the void of uh, our night side empiricism. So, Malokio, The Seven Tongues of Demon, was the last album you released in 2022. What yeah. is the philosophy and ideology behind the album? Malokio was a challenge after 11 albums to represent something different without changing our roots. But uh, we had a different level of vision for what we wanted to represent, not only through our music, but also through the lyrics and the philosophy behind. Malocchio is, uh, is a stated in mutable ways, uh, a concept album. There is no easy way to describe uh, in simple terms and words for what uh, this album is telling about, but we can surely input some key points to its navigation. We explore seven keys to the delve uh, within the darkest corners of our inner sanctum. And uh, whereas the mundane perception is futile and impotent to reach, a demonic vanguard in seven forms that each hymn uh, represents a different aspect and corner of our embryism. So the listener is welcome to be initiated in order to transform them as a personal key to his own embryism. This sigil work uh, accompanying the lyrical work and uh, through them everything comes in tune with this task. 
each scheme is a different uh, corner that uh, a deity was summoned and transformed uh, through our own view of experience. The whole concept in the end has only one vision. And this is the draconian apotheosis. Because, of course, the traditions and uh, its uh, reflection that uh, an individual can uh, express through his own work, this experience creates one simple task. The draconian current that was uh, born before thousands of years before in Sumeria. And the simple factor that lead us and guide us is uh, the draconian apotheosis and this means the enlightenment, the awareness, the mindfulness and the experience that we want to transform, evolve and feel this transcendence to the draconian current that we are evolved over 20 years. So in relation to black metal, we both know that it is more than just music. There is a certain philosophical aspect behind the music, as mentioned before, with Acherontus. Magic and occultism. What is your view on bands who just play music and write lyrics without actually believing it or living it? I think the genre was always like that. Many bands big quality, big quantity, but in the end, I think the time was the greatest uh, catharsis to understand uh, who was walking his words and uh, who is uh, true and pure at his uh, beliefs. And um, you know very well uh, that uh, there is a great quality out there, great bands, great music, although I think the quantity it's not uh, working hand by hand by quality sometimes. For me, I'm trying to focus only to what we represent as a cavern and uh, to what uh, I personally want to uh, experience uh, through this challenge to create art. And um, for me, it's a, a journey, a journey to my inner world, to my inner void of experience. If some bands can join and have this perspective, for me, it's very welcome and a great pleasure to listen to such bands that uh, can uh, create me a vision and touch the deepest uh, void of my heart, you know, my soul. Of course, uh, the whole trend about uh, occult black metal and uh, religious black metal, the orthodox, you can call it yeah. uh, as you wish, it was uh, a cancer, I think, for the general, because Everyone can play good music. Everyone can copy paste, you know, from the books that they are reading and studying and put it in the lyrics. But the energy never lies. I think it's very easy for the listener to understand which band is devoted. Even they are uh, creating great sigils, uh, they write great poetry. I think it's obvious that um, the spiritual path uh, has nothing to do with black metal. Spiritual path is above everything. Even the music is good, the artwork is perfect. Complex sigils and uh, big words from the individual that want to impress, you know, the masses, does not matter at all. The energy that transforms the vision is what matters in the end. What or who exactly would you say you are inspired by? Every experience in mundane day side and night side experience uh, take form through our creations. We never compose, we never enter on stage or represent our art 
if we don't have um, something to offer, philosophical, magical, spiritual, we only create when uh, our night side experience has a deep core and a deep essence that we want to transform and express through our music. For us, it's not a job. We are not living by our bands. We don't give a fuck about uh, if our music is mainstream or if it's acceptable by the masses, if we are acceptable by the big uh, market, you know, out there, magazines. I think always black metal was an uncompromised act, even political, even uh, religious, philosophical. We are not uh, a band that uh, give form in our expressions through acceptance or, uh, you know, the correct way that uh, common metalhead want to accept it and feel safe about this. We're creating only for night side experiences and nothing else. Would you mind sharing exactly what goes into the creative process of your music? This question actually links to what you just mentioned, but would you like to expand on that? Uh, the continuous uh, strive to acquire self-knowledge Gnosis Sophia, because knowledge is theory. Gnosis and Sophia is a validation of your theory into your own empiricism. The process of Hacheronda's Cavern, it's not only to become uh, better musicians. This is for us not of uh, vital importance. The most important is uh, to create a pure level of metamorphosis for the listener and for us inside to be able to recode some deep aspects of our own experience and uh, offer a vision in the end that uh, can inspire and unlock the potential for the individual to dream beyond the skin of matter, beyond the mundane living, and uh, to feel not with his senses, but through his soul and through his subconscious, the psychic transcendence. Now, besides Acherontis, I know that you have been involved in many other projects before, two of which were still active, one being Vampiri Nacht and the other being the ritual ambient Shibalba. Would you say that the yes. vision is the same or do these serve a different purpose? Vampiri Nacht is uh, something different. I cannot speak... Uh deep for this project because I entered the band before three years and Vampire Nacht exists since 1995. Yeah. So the purpose, the purpose of uh, Vampire Nacht uh, is totally different. Of course, has a spiritual and um, satanic philosophy behind that serves through music. Many common uh, crossroads that me with uh, the leader and the main man behind Vampire Nacht are united. Uh, Vampire Nacht serves a sinister tradition that through some uh, personal uh, practices and uh, fields of uh, explorations, you know, in the different uh, labyrinths that uh, create through the music, we are focusing different spiritual aspects from what we are here, those we are studying for. In this way, I don't uh, write many lyrics and uh, I'm dwelling behind the philosophy of Vampiri Nacht, but of course there are many crossroads that are united with Acherontas. For Sibalba, it was a vision that started because I have a huge respect for uh, the genres out of metal. And for me personally, the last 20 years, uh, my interest is more in ritual music, dark cabin music, martial, neoclassical, you know, folk and experimental than metal. I had the need to create something that will be out of the metal, to create something that uh, I enjoyed many years to listen since the middle yeah. of the 90s. The basic goal of this creation was uh, to record all the meditations and some inner workings that uh, me and Saivus, we are uh, working with uh, Sibalba to give the chance and uh, offer them in public. So this will be a map, a tool, a vessel, our music through physical ritual recordings to make uh, the individual 
except uh, to unlock his potential, uh, to be able to feel and uh, have a mind trip, and most important, uh, to dwell in some, uh, I can call, very dangerous and deep experiences that we represent through Sibalba on his own chamber, to take this uh, vessel and use it for his own uh, development, for his own exploration. And also it's a freedom because, you know, metal have, uh, has some um, standards. You create music through guitars, bass, drums, so on. In this genre, you have a freedom that you can create even with some vocals, with some mantras. Uh, you just, uh, you are free to not uh, base your music on instruments, but to base uh, your music to your inner world. Even without playing any notes, nothing at all, you just press the play, you enter into a different mental state and you create something very deep, something very inner that has no limits, no bounds to explore. So this freedom for me as an artist and individual is very important to be able to dive deeper into my subconscious and uh, create something that uh, is more uh, forbidden and of course not acceptable by the common uh, individual that want to enjoy the music. Let's talk about Stutthof. Why did you decide to end the project? Stutthof uh, created back in 1996, December 1996, on solstice back then. Uh, I think uh, that uh, decade, since till uh, 2006, that we split up the band, me and the Mogorgon, was enough. We created everything we wanted, we provoked, we expressed uh, a royal uh, atavistic feeling, not only through music, but also through the experiences that we had back then, from 1996 as teenagers, this decade. And I think that uh, I felt that I had nothing more to create under this uh, serpent skin. And I wanted to make a transformation to another level. And that was the only reason that I decided to split up the band. Of course, Many thought that uh, we wanted to enter into a more commercial uh, level. Uh, others thought that uh, we may regret it about uh, the political stuff. Stutthof was never a political band. Maybe <laughs> some of us, we had uh, for that period in the middle of 90s, some extreme political views, of course. I, I don't say the opposite, but the band, except us as persons that we may have the uh, not political correct views for the public and for the masses the band itself was the same like a hero does it was an occult experience an occult cavern and uh, with the same uh, process of music with the same uh, exploration in lyrics we did exactly the same thing back then we put it uh, the experience that we had in every level of our spiritual path into the music. The only difference it was that it was more atavistic. Uh, it has not uh, the awareness that we have now after uh, 20 years. It's not the same. And I think that Stutthof uh, offered the maximum that we could offer. And um, I don't want to repeat myself. I want to have evolution because I see stillness even in the art as a form of death. And for me, evolution and uh, to move forward, it's uh, of vital importance. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the label Zazen Sounds. What is the vision of Zazen Sounds? Zazen Sounds, it was an idea created uh, after a meditation I had that I wanted uh, to make something uh, that I will be able to support only artists, only artists, that they have an uh, activistic role in spiritual way of expression. Only artists that they are involved in the uh, left hand path or in general, because I don't like the terms left, right hand path and stuff mm -hmm. like that. In general, that they are activists in spiritual path. And I wanted to support specific these artists. So I start this uh, to serve uh, the spiritual uh, background of the art of music and uh, to spread uh, the meaning 
and uh, the main core of uh, the adversarial music that uh, black metal or uh, the dark forms of music like Ritual Dark Cabin is not just music. Black metal was never just music and will never be. Same about uh, some ritual uh, experimental uh, bands, projects that uh, they are not uh, in the genre to entertain the masses. They are uh, promoting and uh, they are supporting an activisting way uh, of expression through their music. And they are standing there just to represent the deeper aspects behind the music against the, the industry, against uh, the political correct uh, attitude that everyone has uh, today. So this non-compromise uh, way of uh, thinking and acting is very important for me. You have also been a guest on many other bands' records, Diva Thorn, Inferno, Black Altar, Prometheus and Crimson Moon, for example. How does the creative force work in this aspect, apart from your own work? To be honest, uh, till 2008, uh, I was not accepting, except the Legion of Doom back then that we had cooperation, to be part of any project. That was a start that happened with Acrimonious when uh, I entered the band and made the vocals I wrote some lyrics to Sunyata uh, and we had a great union to represent something different back then. Then I started with this uh, beginning to take uh, part in some uh, projects that I felt that they have something different to offer and that they are very much devoted. And uh, I opened uh, my experience to challenge myself to create, uh, you know, something out of the standards that I have with here on the Sorsi Balba, something that can um, evolve me as an artist and as an individual to, to dwell behind uh, different uh, creations and behind different, uh, you know, drapes uh, that uh, want to transform through the music. Inferno, for example, uh, it's a great band that uh, had offered, because you mentioned Inferno, that they offered something very unique and uh, gave a new vision to experimental uh, black metal. And of course, they are very much devoted in the genre and for what they're representing, uh, for what black metal represents. So, except uh, the challenge, for me, it's very important to accept such invitations by artists that I have a deep respect. And I don't regret for any guest appearance that I have done. And I'm very grateful for the invitation and uh, honored to sacrifice my energy to the recreations. What is your favorite part of music and what would you say is your least favorite? There is nothing that I reject in music. <laughs> I respect and admire uh, the art, uh, whatever style uh, represents. I don't have the mentality that uh, I perform black metal, I listen metal since early 90s. No, I am open to everything. Uh, even in jazz music, uh, in country music, in electronic music, everything. So nothing that I deny, nothing that I reject. I'm uh, open to experience always different projects, uh, different vibrations for the art out there. That's good because you're not keeping yourself boxed <laughs> in just a, you know, black metal. I have to just, because uh... no, no, there no, are no, many, I, I... many like that. It was just like uh, only black metal, uh, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I find it uh, tragic, you know. Yeah. I I read uh, some interviews, uh, or I'm talking with some people that uh, in tours, you know, that they are talking. We only support metal, and the metal is only about evil and the black yeah. metal like this. No, 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 no. I, I think it's uh, tragic, 
metal is not about evil. Metal is about uh, a revolution, um, about the adversary, about the evolution, of course. It, it's a um, deep uh, creation that uh, makes the individual, you know, to feel freedom, not to take the individual and put him inside the box. Yeah. So such declaration that um, metal is civil and uh, only metal is the law and stuff like mm. that. <laughs> I think it's for teenagers and yeah, it's very childish. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, not my cup of <laughs> Same about black metal. Same about black metal. Uh, of course, the antinomian spirit of black metal is uh, an inner uh, adversarial fire that dwells inside the individual. It's not about uh, trying to change the societies, yeah. trying to change uh, the people, trying to influence the masses. No, 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 nothing at all. I think the most important is to strive to change ourselves, to have an evolution through our inner void of experience and not change the world, the masses and provoke and stuff like that. It's not uh, about ego and stuff like that. I think it's more wise to focus your time and your energy, to create, to feel, to get involved, and not spend time to trying to prove out there who you are, how much evil you are. And above all, spirituality is not about evilness. Mm. Spirituality is not about uh, destroying the world and all of this stuff. Yes, as poetry is fantastic, of course, but in the real world, in the real world of experience, not the real world of Monday. In the real world of experience, the whole uh, empiricism in spiritual path is to evolve in a higher being, to be more mindful, to embrace a deeper awareness that make your spirit free and out of the bounds that society offers, religions offer, any kind of dogma offers. I think the most important is to see the art as a vessel of our own evolution and development. When did you start playing guitar and doing vocals? I bought my first guitar in 1993. It was uh, a Vester guitar <laughs> that uh, I, as a teenager, I bought it back then and started to play. And of course, I was trying uh, with a strange way to trying to learn guitar by playing black metal. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit, uh, you know, strange, but it was yes. 1993, 1994, that uh, I started to play guitar. I started to listen metal music in 1992. After this, I think uh, my first uh, recording was uh, in 1995, one year before I started with uh, Stutthof. It was uh, with Nocturnity Band, that we, with a, with the main man, the leader behind Nocturnity, we created the, we created back then the band and started to have rehearsals in a home and wanted to record a demo. And uh, I think that was the start. I don't remember before something serious to mention here. The, the main uh, <laughs> start was back then. Humble beginnings. <laughs> now, Akarantas has had quite a number of live shows. What would you say was your most memorable show you ever had? Uh, it's a bit difficult. We have performed over 250 shows. I can think um, for sure South America tour. Very much intense and devoted people there. I think um, the people there in South America, they are living this black flame. Very, very pure. It's a different world, I think. I will say also Russia. Two times I was there for a mini tour. As festivals, I think uh, a Russian black mass in 2010. Mm. It was of the most uh, serious festival that used to take place. Very much professional, very, very much dark aspect. Not only on stage, also before you enter on stage. 
the whole experience was uh, amazing. Many, many experiences in different shows. Uh, Spire, for example, um, in Germany was uh, something unique back then. Many, many great names when the occult black metal started to rise uh, stronger in the journal was something very, very impressive. But I will say Russian Black Mass Festival as my favorite one. Okay, let's talk about the scene in Greece, the Hellenic black metal scene. We all know it's amazing and it's very important to the origins of black metal, actually. Necromancia and Varathron. For you personally, what was it like growing up in that time? Were you always attracted to black metal? The Hellenic scene was always at the top, but people uh, focused more on in Norway or Sweden yeah. because uh, the media focus there because of the events that happened. But I think um, the Greek scene, not because of my heritage, <laughs> but because of the true facts, it was the most impressive scene back then. They were creating something uh, very, very unique. Very unique. Mm. And for me, Necromantia, for example, is uh, my favorite black metal band, except Burzum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Necromania and Bosm is my favorite black metal bands. Um, I think the whole uh, general back then, in the end of uh, 80s, early 90s, uh, the whole atmosphere, you know, the energy was very magical, very evil, but uh, not with a childish uh, way of meaning, but uh, with a pure aggressive attitude. They had the flame to create, to create again and again. The early Varathon releases, Roti Christ, um, especially till uh, Non Serviam album, Necromantia, everything, everything they have released uh, till uh, Ancient Pride are huge. Of course, there are many. It's Mortify, it's Tatir, Vampirinacht back then. Um, the list is endless. Even uh, Dark Abin Bands that started back then. Mm. For now, I think uh, the healing scene is uh, strong, big quantity of bands, very good quality, very good bands rising uh, day by day. And um, I think the black flame is very strong in, uh, in Alas. Yes. What do you like doing outside of music? Do you have any hobbies? Unfortunately, I don't have so much time because uh, to explore more hobbies than music, because uh, my daily job is, uh, is as life coach. And um, the extension of this is uh, Zazen Sounds. So these two jobs that I'm running as mundane uh, takes all the time from me. Mm -hmm. So the time that I have out of uh, my daily activities with these uh, two, two labels, uh, is to focus on studying, practicing my yoga meditation daily, and books, 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 uh, only this. There is no time for more explorations right yeah. now. My priorities are focusing the music and, and to the sacred science. If we can call something that um, is uh, much mundane that I am able and I am enjoying to do is uh, to train my body and to keep... Uh, my flesh uh, in a good shape because my mentality and perspective is uh, that uh, the flesh is not uh, a prison but it's a temple. For me it's uh, very important to have a very good man in a day side way of living to be able then uh, work in deeper and higher night side aspects of empiricism. This I can say only as a different hobby. Draconian Elitism, the split release between Acherontes, Orphomod and Black Altar releases June 21st. Is there anything you would like to say about it? What inspired the split? 
This split release was an idea from uh, Darius by, by Black Altar because there is a mutual respect between these three bands. We discussed about the uh, concept that uh, these three bands have uh, as a common um, tool to explore the black metal and the second science, that is the draconian current. So we decided to make a split release that uh, will be devoted and dedicated there and uh, to create uh, some hymns that uh, accept to serve the draconian current and uh, the philosophy that we represent through our music to offer a strong black metal release that is not uh, compromised with the standards uh, of the new black metal genre. Besides the split release, are there any plans for a future Acherontes album or any other projects that you're working on? A new album with Sibalba will come uh, on early May by Cyclic Law. We have already started to compose uh, the new album of Acherontes, but it will be after one year and a half out. But we already started to work on this. There are also some Vampire Nacht and release tracks that we are thinking what uh, to do or work uh, with these uh, new hymns. And uh, we have some uh, yoga meditation sessions, me and Saivus, that uh, we have already recorded and um, are very interesting because our new explorations uh, that we experienced and we want to release them uh, possibly as a mini album later this year by Zaz and Sounds. Do you have any live shows coming up? I know there's one uh, in October, right? Yes. I've seen it, yeah. Yes, it That's... was it was confirmed uh, before uh, two weeks, I think, for one week. It was uh, also a ritual performance with Balba at the borders uh, between Germany and Netherlands, a special uh, unique event with uh, limited uh, access to 200 people only, with many great acts like Halomanas, Arctaueos, Trepan uh, Ritualen from Sweden, a, a great event. Also, we confirmed uh, a Latin American tour with yeah. seven dates, but uh, not this one that we have already announced, uh, that it will be uh, on uh, September, as we have said. It, this one was cancelled and um, we arranged with a new promotional uh, agency to make a, a new deal and um, with Inferno we shall perform uh, these special uh, shows uh, on June next year, I think. Also, we have some uh, shows that were cancelled uh, during uh, the COVID period. It was a mini tour in Russia, a single exclusive show in the United Kingdom, and uh, now we are talking with an uh, agency to, for a mini tour uh, in Europe and will take place again uh, with the brothers from Inferno. I believe that you are contributing to the Grimoire by Sirius Esoterica, the Grimoire which is part of the Clipart series. Would you mm -hmm. mind sharing what your contribution would be? Except Zazen Sounds magazine, I always writing articles and uh, I give them to some very close brothers of mine to be released at their books. Now we have a, a great union many years with Edgar Kerval, so I have two articles ready for his upcoming uh, Lephotic series, and uh, also with uh, Sin Woodward uh, to cooperate again for a new edition that he is running with many great authors and uh, practitioners of the left-hand path. 
and uh, possible for a book release by Zazen Sounds, the publishing house, that will uh, have many articles from uh, authors around the world, including a small essay by me again, an empirical essay about the draconian current, the draconian perfection, and some uh, notes uh, that may help the individual to put them into his own practice. Anything you would like to say to the fans of your music? My respect uh, for uh, their devotion and uh, the trust that they are showing to explore our own vision. I think that uh, even someone enjoy the music or the lyrics, for me, is the most important is the support by the individual to what we represent and we're creating here. And this uh, great... Uh, boost, you know, a power to continue a difficult vision to have and offer to the masses. So just an honor and a gratitude towards these people. Thank you. Any advice you have for those wanting to start black metal bands or projects? I could say just to be pure is the most uh, difficult thing that someone must achieve to be pure and to create, to serve the art, not for the money, not to be acceptable by society and by the music media out there, just to be pure and devoted to what black metal represents without any compromise to this hysteria right now that there is out there that everyone trying to prove that they are welcome and to strive for, uh, you know, for fame, for money, for glory. These are low instincts that has nothing to do with black metal and for what it represents. Purity, devotion, and to listen to their inner void to create. Not to copy paste from the books, from other bands, just to listen, feel, and record their own empirism. And so we have come to the sad part of the interview, the end. Is there anything you would like to say? First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation. Uh, it was an honor to speak with you and to share my vision, my thoughts. And um, I would like only to say that uh, the Coven will uh, continue to create uh, deeper and deeper aspects beyond and behind the skin of uh, our creations. And um, more releases will come in the near future and we have many plans that we cannot reveal right now. Nothing can stop the coven, only our inspiration. As long as our inspiration guides us, the black flame will reign forward. Thank you so much for joining me, for accepting this invitation. I really humbly appreciate it. Thank you very much.